everyone. I'm John Whipple, and I'm talking to you from my studio in Winter Park, Florida. I didn't know what to do with this thing. I just decided I'm going to just, just talk about the journey a little bit. I mean, I've had a few cool, interesting lessons that have helped shape my work and my life also, and I just thought I would talk about those a little bit. Um, so to begin with, when I was young, I was the boy who just liked to draw. I mean, I look back and it's kind of funny. I didn't know a single visual artist. I never saw anybody paint. There were none in our family. But somehow at a very early age, this is what I thought I would do. I never understood what an artist really does, what a career looks like. I just like to draw. Really, when I went to college, that was the first time I had to kind of start thinking about it. Like, what is an artist's career? I decided to go into graphic design because it just seemed to be pointing in some kind of job, maybe? Who knows? I know I didn't know. I just, it's like, made sense. And I went, got my first job, and I began to realize that I didn't really like it that much, you know? I mean, I, enjoy, I enjoyed, like, the problem-solving of it. I enjoyed... Um, sort of the constraints and it, you know it gave me a job to do kind of like school so I kind of like that and um, it, it taught me that I like deadlines that I need a deadline and and I did really enjoy getting paid which is like you know good for me but when I think back um, I, I think when I was finally beginning to think about doing my own work trying to get out of all the sort of jobs that I was doing and it was when I began to study drawing. And when I broke it down into its simplest form, so I could really understand what made a good picture, it really made, uh, it made so much a big difference for me. Because you know, a line on a piece of paper is the root form of all art. Now when I take this line and I just start drawing, it moves around and it then intersects itself and that turns into shapes. And now I can take these shapes and these lines and inside of that format there, I'm starting to design a picture. Throw in some mark making and that's all you have. Every drawing that's ever been created only uses these three elements, lines, shapes, and marks. So what I began to understand was, wow, this is my job and not an easy one. I've got to translate the whole world into my own unique combination of just these three elements. When Matisse said, there's nothing more difficult for a truly creative painter to paint than a rose, for, before he could do that, he sort of, you have to forget all the other roses. So I think that's what he's talking about. And once I figured that out, everything seemed to make more sense. Like Picasso made more sense, to Kooning, abstract expressionism. How many different ways could I figure out how to paint a rose or a landscape or a face? I'd found my purpose. Now there were times on this journey that that road got pretty bumpy. I often felt lost, and I, but I remember this pivotal talk I had with my, my teacher at the time, and I just asked him, you know, I, I don't want to go backwards, I'm kind of stuck, can you give me some insight into maybe what I should do next? And he took a second and said, now I'm not solving that for you, that's yours. But what I'll tell you is, you're going to be such a better artist a hundred paintings from now. It was not the answer I was looking for, really, but in retrospect, it's what I needed. To me, it meant that each piece of art moves you ever so slightly forward. I began to see my work as mile markers. That's why I date them, so I can chart my growth. But maybe more importantly, was I thought if I had to do the 100, maybe I could speed up the process. 
Extract more learning from each piece. If I set up each attack as a new problem to solve, start each one differently, try to find something fresh and new to my eyes, maybe not try to fall back on redundant solutions and behaviors, then maybe I would be a better artist. It also taught me to appreciate all my failed attempts and bad paintings. Could they really be that bad if I learned something from them? Just alleviating the idea of good and bad less judgment, made art making for me so much more enjoyable. It began to feel so much more like I did when I was young. I mean, why did I like to draw? Was it a pat on the back? Or was it something else? What's my child spirit trying to tell me? I think I began to understand when my wife Lynn and I decided to make an art car. We had friends that had made one and they kept going to Houston and raving about it and saying the art car parade there is just awesome and we should make one and we decided to do that. I mean, it, it was an interesting process. We bought an old Cadillac and I just worked on it for years. First couple years just mostly had paint, but then I started adding sculpture I mean, I never carved before. The car was sort of the beginnings of my whole sculpture career. And this whole thing was just a completely new tangent. And it was absurdist. I drove it for over eight years. It was a really... Interesting experience for me. I wasn't comfortable riding and driving it. And I don't even Lynn liked it at first, but occasionally you just start seeing all the kids smiling and people sneaking around looking at it. And um, and my favorite always just people that just could not, they could not turn their neck and look at that thing for anything. I mean, it was like my own little social experiment. And when you drove in that, the world is a happy place and you're a child. Now, maybe because the car had no commercial intent, I just felt totally liberated to put any stupid, funny, body, childish thing that came to my mind. And I love that. There was just something about that was so freeing. And even now when I make my artwork, I want to feel that way. I want to be able to laugh, find the humor, just relish the joy of using my hands. I want to feel that way when I was just a boy drawing on the dining room table. I sometimes question this life and what I want from it. Can I let go of my ego and my competitiveness just to enjoy the journey? How much is wrapped up in me wanting to be successful and making a living? When I look back, what will I remember? What will I be most proud of? Will it be the artwork I've created? Or the crazy times? Uh, the great friends? Oh, the, the long nights partying and the wonderful dinners and man, our just our traveling band of misfits. Isn't crafting an artful life part of our body of work? And doesn't the playfulness and the joy in our life become magically translated and reflected through our artwork? I mean, I don't, I believe in that kind of magic. It feels like magic to me when I'm just driving and an idea just comes out of nowhere. It feels like magic to me when I sit down 
and six hours are gone. Now you could probably find science explains it all, but I'm gonna choose a world where I feel like I have this transformative ability to make something out of nothing. Where I can turn an idea, a mere thought, into a physical reality. Where I can find beauty in all the debris. Where I can rummage through my collection of rusty and discarded objects and create something that can make me cry or laugh. I choose a world where I can bring anything back to life just by asking, what can I make with that? When Picasso said, it took me four years to paint like Raphael, but a lifetime to paint like a child, he helped me understand the real artistic journey. It's not about learning techniques or craftsmanship or getting in museum and gallery shows. To me, it's understanding that all of those carefully laid mile markers are on a road that isn't straight, but one with a slow curving arc back to my beginning. A beginning when there was no right or wrong, bad or good, should or shouldn't. Just a place with less judgment where play and joy and magic exist. For most of my life, I thought about art as the work I created, unaware of the journey. But I've learned more about who I am, what I love, how I think, how I see the world than I ever could have imagined. All the doors that have been opened, the roads we got to travel, the kindred spirits we've been lucky to meet are all because of this journey. I feel now that the faint whisperings of that little boy have grown a little bit louder. His message to me of why I love to draw a little bit clearer. Can I, even if I'm aware of this journey, be able to let go of my ego and all my hardened adult motivations just to play in this world? Man, I'm trying. Thank you so much for watching. To get more info on any available work, please go to my store or check out my Instagram and Facebook page. And thanks again.